Israel is on edge this morning as the results come in showing Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his opponent deadlocked at this hour. The future uncertain. On September 17, 2019, the Israeli populace voted in their second election in five months. As it stands now when I'm recording this, Benjamin Netanyahu's ruling Likud party is officially the second largest party in the Israeli parliament, the Knesset. His challenger, Benny Gantz's Blue and White, is the largest party. The kicker? Both of them only have slightly more than a quarter of the 120 total seats. For a lot of people outside of Israel, this is an extremely confusing situation, so I'm going to try and clarify. However, if we want to answer the most basic question, who won, we'll need to back up a bit and understand how Israel's government works. Israel operates under a party list proportional representation system. What this means is that each party prepares a list of people they'd like to have sit in the Knesset. On election day, the voters go into a booth and pick which party they would like by putting a ballot with a letter code into an envelope. The seats in the Knesset are then approximately divided according to the percentage of the vote each party receives. One thing that's important though is that there's a cutoff. A party must receive at least 3.25% of the vote in order to qualify. That's going to come up a lot later. Before the last parliament dissolved, the two biggest parties were Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud and the Machane Tzioni, or the Zionist Union, made up of two parties, Labour and Hatnua. Labour was led by Avi Gabay, and Hatnua was led by Tsipi Livni. In January 2019, Gabay pulled the rug out from under Livni and announced without informing her first that he was pulling Labour out of the Zionist Union for the upcoming election. Humiliated, Livni announced that Hatnua would not be running in the elections. The third biggest party was Harishima Hamishu Tefet, or the Joint List. This was a party composed of three Arab parties and one Arab Jewish Communist Party. Prior to the April election, these four parties split into two groups that were running independently. Khadash Ta'al, led by Eman Odeh, and Ra'am Balad, led by Mansour Abbas. The fourth biggest was the secular, centrist Yesh Atid, or There Is a Future, led by Yair Lapid. Following that, was the center-right Kulanu, led by Moshe Kahlon, the far-right nationalist Habayta Yehudi, led by Naftali Bennett, the Mizrahi ultra-Orthodox party Shas, led by Arya Deri, the far-right Russian secular party Yisrael Beitenu, led by Avidor Lieberman, the Ashkenazi ultra-Orthodox party United Torah Judaism, led by Yaakov Litzman, and Meretz, the left-wing progressive party, led by Tamar Zandberg. There are a lot of parties in Israeli politics, and it's about to get worse, not better. Anyways, significantly before the April election, Netanyahu, or Bibi as Israelis call him, had a coalition of 66 seats out of 120. You need 61 to form a majority. His coalition was made of Likud, Kulanu, Habayta Yehudi, Shas, Israel Beitenu, and UTJ. However, there were internal tensions between the secular members of the coalition and the ultra-Orthodox members. Israel Beitenu left the coalition, leaving Bibi with a razor-thin 61-seat coalition. Deciding this was not enough to govern, he called elections. When the election was called, a number of political realignments occurred. As mentioned before, the Zionist Union returned to being Labour and Hatnua, with Hatnua not running. A former member of Israel Beitenu, Orli Levi Abekasis, started her own center-left political party called Gesher, or Bridge. The leader of Habayta Yehudi, Naftali Bennett, and one of his deputies, Ayelet Sheked, left Habayta Yehudi to form a new party, meant to bridge the gap between religious and secular Jews, called Hayamin HaChadash, or the New Right. However, Habayta Yehudi didn't disappear when they left. Instead, they doubled down on their religious nationalist identity and combined with a number of smaller parties, most notably Otzma Yehudit, or Jewish Power, a fascist Jewish supremacist party advocating the policies of recognized terrorist Meir Kahana and his banned Kach party. They did this at the behest of Bibi, who wanted to avoid any right-wing parties falling under the 3.25% threshold, 
as that would lead to votes being wasted. This group of right-wing parties called itself the Union of Right-Wing Parties. The most notable development, however, was the entry of former Israeli Defense Forces Chief of Staff Benjamin Gantz, or Benny. He and two other former generals who had entered politics combined with Yair Lapid to form the centrist, secular Kachol Lavan, or Blue and White Party. They agreed to a rotation deal, so that if Blue and White won, Gantz and Lapid would each spend two years as Prime Minister, with Gantz serving first. Finally, a far-right nationalist party called Zehut, led by Moshe Feiglin, ran on a platform of legalizing weed, and gathered considerable attention because of that. This was the stage when Election Day came around on April 9, 2019. A scandal broke out on the day of the election, when it turned out that Likud activists had secretly been filming polling booths in Arab neighborhoods. This was possibly a major contributing factor in lowering Arab turnout. When the dust settled, the final results were as follows. Likud had 35 seats, and Blue and White also had 35 seats, tying Likud. Shas had 8 seats, UTJ had 8 seats, Chadash Ta'al had 6, Labor 6, Israel Betenu 5, Union of Right-Wing Parties 5, Meretz 4, Kulanu 4, Ra'am Balad 4. Hayamin HaChadash and Zehut both failed to clear the threshold, which is important. It cost Bibi's right-wing coalition enough seats to make all the difference. Gesher also failed to cross the threshold, which cost the left some votes as well. The tally now stood like this. Bibi-aligned parties had exactly 60 seats, and the anti-Bibi parties had 55, and the kingmaker was Israel Beitenu leader, Avigdor Lieberman. After an Israeli election, the Israeli president asks each party who they recommend to be prime minister. The majority of the elected members recommended Bibi, and so he had the first chance to form a governing coalition. He managed to wrangle almost all of his aligned parties on board. However, Lieberman had one demand to re-enter the government. Change the laws to force ultra-Orthodox Israelis to be drafted into the Israeli Defense Forces. I'm not going to go into the history of why they don't currently do so, but suffice to say, the Orthodox parties weren't on board with this. After stonewalling by both sides, Bibi's allotted time plus an extension that he was given to form a government were almost up. Tradition would state that after this, the leader of the next largest party, in this case, Benny Gantz, would have a chance to form a coalition. However, Bibi didn't want this to happen, and so convinced the majority of the Knesset to dissolve itself and go to a second round of elections. This is how we got to the September election, by Bibi refusing to give Gantz a chance to form a coalition. There were further realignments in between the two elections. First of all, all of the smaller right-wing parties, except for Otsma Yehudi, combined into one larger right-wing party called the Yamina, or rightward. This new party was led by Ayelet Sheked. Secondly, Feiglin dropped out of the new round of elections at Bibi's request to avoid wasting more right-wing votes. Third, Likud absorbed Kulanu. Fourth, Labour kicked out their leader, Avi Gabai, after their horrible showing in the April election and elected a longtime staple of Israeli politics, Amir Peretz. Additionally, Meretz elected a new leader in Nitzan Horowitz. Fifth, the two Arab and Communist lists combined back together into the joint list, again led by Ayman Odeh. Sixth, Gesher combined into Labour. Finally, Meretz combined with the new party led by former Prime Minister Ehud Barak, with Barak placing himself 10th on the list, essentially guaranteeing that he wouldn't make it into the Knesset. There was some speculation that this was due to his possible involvement in the Epstein scandal in the United States. This new left-wing party was Hamachaneha Demokrati, or the Democratic Union. This sets the stage for the September election. Of the major parties running, there were Likud, Blue and White, The Joint List, Shas, Israel Beitenu, UTJ, Yamina, Labour Gesher, the Democratic Union, and Otsma Yodit. When election day rolled around, predictions were that Arab voters would be even further disincentivized to appear at the polls, with the camera scandal and the racist rhetoric coming from Bibi. However, the opposite happened. 
In response, Arab turnout surged and overall turnout was higher than the April election, something nobody anticipated. As the votes rolled in, the final stated tally was as follows. Blue and White, 33. Likud, 32. Joint List, 13. Shas, 9. Israel Betenu, 8. UTJ, 7. Yamina, 7. Labor Gesher, 6. Democratic Union, 5. Otsma Yudit, 0. Otsma failed to cross the threshold. The seat distribution now stood as follows. Pro Netanyahu, 55. Anti Netanyahu, 57. And Israel Beitenu had 8. Again, Lieberman was the kingmaker. This time, he was pushing for a unity government between Likud and Blue and White, possibly with Israel Beitenu included. Together, all three parties would have 73 seats, an easy majority. Even without Lieberman, Likud and Blue and White would have a majority. However, Bibi doesn't want anyone else to be Prime Minister, as being Prime Minister is the only chance he has to save himself from criminal proceedings that are currently ongoing against him. Gantz won't sit with Likud as long as they're led by Bibi. So, as it stands now, the situation stands at a stalemate. When it came time for President Rivlin to decide who would have the first shot at forming a government, the joint list did something they had only done once before. They informed Rivlin that 10 out of their 13 MKs would support Gantz for Prime Minister. The fact only 10 supported him instead of 13 meant that Bibi still barely got the chance to go first, but it was a very important symbolic display of support. The only time this had happened before was when the Arab party supported Yitzhak Rabin to become Prime Minister. There have also been some reports that this split between their MKs was intentional, that Gantz asked the joint list to only have 10 MKs support him, instead of all 13. This would be a tactical move, since if Bibi fails to form a coalition within the deadline, which he almost certainly will, Gantz would get to go second, and he's betting that Likud would rather dispose of Bibi than go to a third election. As I'm recording this, Bibi is trying to form a government. Where it will go from here is uncertain, but the most likely scenario appears to be a third election. One thing that's clear though, is that these results are horrific for Bibi. Before the April election, he was the undisputed leader. The April election forced him to call a second election just to avoid losing his premiership, and this election, his coalition bled even more seats. It's still unclear who won this election, but one thing is for sure, Benjamin Netanyahu lost.